I called home the other day and told my mother I had discovered why all the women in those old paintings from like centuries ago were very voluptuous. I heard the, the term Rubenesque because Ruben was one of the painters of this kind of woman. Well, this is probably what she was eating. This is homemade yogurt, and I can't even tell you how delicious this is. Once you've learned the easy, simple recipe we're going to do today, you're going to want it all of the time, and the only thing you're going to have to do is be disciplined enough to keep yourself to only eating one of these per day, because if I could have it at every meal, I think I just might. Anyway, stay tuned, because today we're going to make homemade, full fat, the most scrumptious you've ever had in your life, yogurt. It wouldn't surprise me if you have almost everything you need already in your kitchen right now to make yogurt today. So if by chance you do after watching this video, I encourage you go ahead and take the jump and do it. It's so easy, you're gonna absolutely love it. Now, I'm just gonna tell you, ideally you would love to have a Revereware pan. I have my grandma's with the Revereware logo on the back. This is that copper bottomed pan that just spreads the heat so perfectly and evenly. Some people seem to think that if you don't want milk to scald on the bottom, you should rub it initially on the bottom inside with an ice cube. Now I don't really do that, but I do rinse it with water and generally that seems to help. So you do whatever you think is best. You're gonna want either a metal or a wooden spoon. I'll bet you have one of those. You're gonna want a glass uh, cup. And then I have this candy thermometer that sure makes it easier. Some people don't uh, use a thermometer, they just feel it with their finger. But I would say the first couple of times you make yogurt, you need to know exactly where you're at with the temperature. And then you'll want some milk. And the best kind to use is going to be whole milk, right out of a cow, unpasteurized, fresh as you can get. But for the rest of us that don't have access to that, you can go to the store and you want to get the closest thing to it. Organic whole milk is going to be ideal for yogurt. And really, if you can get it um, not ultra pasteurized, most milk is pasteurized, but if you can get it not ultra pasteurized like you see here, that's really, you can do it with it, but it's not as high in its nutrition content if you get the ultra pasteurized. But if you're like me and this is all you have access to at the grocery store today, it's gonna work just fine. Next, the only other ingredient it has besides milk is a little bit of starter yogurt. So I would recommend going out and getting a starter. You can sometimes get the small version of this, but this is going to be whole plain yogurt. That's really what you want ideally. And you want it to be with the whole milk, um, not the 2% or 0% fat, which is so common on the shelf. You'll wanna look closely to get whole milk, plain, and I get this uh, Cabot Greek yogurt because it's extra thick and I really like thick, thick yogurt. So if you wanna get it extra thick, this uh, Cabot Greek plain yogurt is a really great one to start with. And they just incidentally were out, but you could start with a smaller starter since we'll not need so very little of this. And very lastly, you're going to want jars. Now any jars will do. You could use leftover pesto jars and other things that you've saved up. If you happen to need to buy jars though, this little half pint size with the large mouth is just ideal for yogurt. The reason being, I can put a cup of yogurt in this and then have room for my toppings. I usually like chia and um, some honey on top and it just gives enough room right there for me to add those after I've made the yogurt. So these are ideal, but anything you've got is gonna work just fine. Even a quart jar or a pint jar will be just fine. So here we go with what we're going to um, get started with. And now let's start making yogurt. We're going to just put the burner on medium heat. That's easy enough. And we're going to fill it with about as much milk as is going to fit into the pan. So I don't even measure. I just fill it until the pan is somewhere near the top and I'll know that's as much yogurt as I'm making. All right, there's some there, and I'm going to actually fill it the rest of the way with this other milk. Both of these are whole milk, just one is ultra pasteurized and one isn't. And whatever, whatever you see burning off there is just on the burner because of whatever has burned on it in the past. 
Once I've got the milk in there, I'm going to let it set and I'm going to just put in here my candy thermometer so it can be kind of our babysitter. It just, the only secret to it is don't have it actually touching the bottom of the pan. You kind of want to pull it up just a little ways and I'm going to be watching for this to slowly raise all the way to 160 degrees. Now that's easy enough. I usually set the timer for eight minutes because that's just a good time to check it and say, hey, where are we at? We gotta be getting close. So about eight minutes and really you just let it sit here on, on medium. It should not come to a boil on its own. Uh, if I'm in doubt, I'll come in here and just stir it a little bit, but um, there's no secret to it other than just letting it rest now and waiting for it to get to 160 degrees. If it gets a little over that, don't even stress. It can get up to about 175 without me worrying a single bit about it. And now we'll let this rest and we'll come back and visit you in about eight minutes and see where we're at. All right, so if you notice, we've been waiting about 10 minutes and it's gotten all the way up to 175, 176. I kind of wasn't paying good, a close attention. You'll notice also that a little film, see that film has formed on the top of this milk and that's totally fine. Sometimes if it didn't get quite that um, hot, this film may or may not have formed, but it would certainly have the little bubbles around the edges like you see here. You don't want it to be boiling or you've ruined it but 175 is just fine. So I'm gonna skim this off. Some people like to save it and just stir it into the yogurt, but it might make a little bit of a thick clod when it, when it is you know, eaten. So I like to skim it off and I'm just gonna throw that in the sink real quick. So now I'm just gonna stir this just a little bit without scraping the bottom, just in case there's a little bit of uh, skim that's formed itself on the bottom. I don't really want to get that off. I'm going to take the candy thermometer out now and the next little step that we need to do is just let this set off of the burner. So I'm going to move it off of the burner right over here to the middle of the stove. I'm going to set it there and set the timer. Now it takes a little bit longer. You notice the last bit of time was about 10 minutes. And now we're going to let it sit for about 15, almost 20 minutes for it to come all the way down to 110 degrees. So I'll rinse that thermometer off, put it back in here and just let it rest for about 20 minutes until it reaches 110 degrees. But in the meantime, this is my cue. Once I take it off of the heat, this is my cue to go ahead and get the yogurt out of the refrigerator that I'm going to use as the starter yogurt. I'll only need two tablespoons of it for this, but I'm gonna go ahead and take that carton of yogurt out and set it on the counter, like you see here behind me. I'm gonna set it on the counter and just let it rest here so it's almost room temperature. It'll still be a little cool, but almost room temperature for when we stir a little starter of it with the yogurt here in just a bit. We've waited about 35 minutes and the milk has successfully cooled down to that 110 degrees, which is exactly what we want on our candy thermometer. You can see it's got this little skim on the top that's grown again and that's just fine. So my next step is to take out the thermometer. You can see it's got a little bit of milk residue on it and that's just fine. I'll put that in the sink for later. And I'm going to skim off this little skin that's on the top. Some people again like to just stir that into their yogurt. I really don't like the little clod of milk that it creates. So I'm going to put that in the sink, rinse the spoon off and be right back. All right, so what we need to do is mix just a little starter with this. This is about a quart, quart and a half of milk that I've got in here. And so I'm going to use about just roughly, doesn't have to be precise, but about two tablespoons per quart. I've got Cabot Greek plain yogurt, like I told you about before, that I'm going to use for the starter. And I've let it sit out for this 35 minutes, so it's almost room temperature. Also, it's good to use the freshest yogurt that you can. I just bought this this morning. I took and broke that seal here a few minutes ago, so this is as fresh of yogurt as I can get. And I used as fresh of milk as I could find also. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of this in this bowl and whisk it up with about a cup of the milk here. And we're going to get it really well incorporated so there are no lumps. Then I'm just gonna pour it back in with the rest of the milk and stir it all together like that before we put it into the little jars. So here we go. First, we'll take off the lid. Beautiful, nice, thick yogurt, you can see there. And I'm going to just reach into that, see how thick that is? It's wonderful. That's about two tablespoons right there. And I'm just going to set it down in this 
uh, dish and then I'm going to reach into the milk with my cup measure and it doesn't matter how much I get but roughly a cup worth and I'm going to pour it in there with the yogurt starter. This is so easy anyone can do it and I love that about this recipe. So now I'm just taking a wire whisk and I'm going to whisk it up. You can see it's going to be lumpy here at first but we're going to whisk it just for a few minutes until it gets all stirred in and very very thin just like milk. You won't even tell that there's yogurt in there at all for the starter. So I'm going to whisk that up here for a minute or two and it doesn't take long before that's all very well incorporated. I don't want any lumps. There will be just a little bit of residue around the edge as you see there, but that's nothing to worry about. That's just to be expected. I think we've about got it. Let me get a clean spoon and I'm going to test this. See if it's well, there's a, there's a smidgen of lumps still showing, so I'm going to whisk it just a tiny bit more. You see the little tiny bit of lumps on there. Those aren't anything to worry about, but I'm going to whisk it just a smidgen more until we can get more of that out of there. And once I get it really, really well stirred, sometimes people let it even sit here for just a minute or two um, after they whisk it. But Either way, you should be fine. Okay. And now I'm going to pour it right into the pan with the rest of the milk. All right, so now we are going to stir this all together just so that every bit of that milk has got a little bit of that yogurt culture starter incorporated in it doesn't take but a minute. You don't need to whisk it up. And at this point, I don't scrape the bottom of the pan because there is going to be just a little bit of residue that's, that's um, attached to the bottom of the pan. And just in case any of it is even the slightest bit burnt or, or thick, I don't want to get that in with it. So I'm not scraping the bottom of the pan, but I'm making sure it's very well stirred. And every bit of that milk has got some culture that's mixed with it. Doesn't take but a minute, and I think we should be good to go. Now I'm going to carefully put it into each of these jars and fill them about three quarters to almost all the way up, but leaving enough room for my raw honey and the chia or whatever else I like to put into it to make it special for my breakfast tomorrow. All right, so here we go on that. I'm gonna just dip in my same cup and you want to make sure your jars are very clean. If you're in doubt at all, go ahead and wash them again in, on a, a high heat setting in your dishwasher. You can see I've filled that to about three quarters, almost all the way up. I'm going to just set it down there and get my next jar. I could have taken these lids off before, but I wanted to just keep every bit of bugs and debris and dust out of them. There I go, filling that up. Should take exactly one cup in each of these jars. And if I have a little leftover, I either halfway fill up a jar or I even go out and get a pint jar and just um, put the rest of it in a pint jar. Believe me, every bit of this yogurt is going to get eaten. All right, I've got all of the jars filled up. I had a little bit of extra, so I went and put it in an old antique uh, pint jar from Grandma. And it's not so antique or special, but this old pesto jar that I just had laying around, it's perfect for that last little bit. After I've got all of them with their lids on, the next step is to find a warm enough place for them to sit for about eight to 10 to 12 or even 15 hours, it doesn't matter. The longer they sit in a nice, really warm environment, the thicker the yogurt is going to get and the stronger it's going to taste. So if you like very mild, very creamy yogurt, you'll just want to set it overnight for about eight hours. But if you're someone like my mother who likes very thick and very tart yogurt, you'll let it sit for longer. 
and there's no wrong or right. You just will find out what works for you. The place I have found that I love, I've done it two ways. I've put them in the oven and you can set the oven on the lowest temperature setting ahead of time to 170 degrees, which is as low as mine will go. If yours goes lower, lower, that's great. But then you turn it off as you set them into the oven and just leave the oven light on all through the night. That gives them about 80 to 90 degrees of warmth all through the night. But I actually found something I like better than I'm showing you today. And that is this wonderful invention called the microwave. And you know most of us have a microwave that has a light right underneath it. So as long as you have that microwave light turned on, it's going to have enough heat going up into the actual microwave that it's going to be perfect temperature of right around 90 degrees all night long for your yogurt. So that's what we're going to do. Incidentally, the light underneath my microwave comes up right about here. So it's not centered exactly. And I want to keep them a little higher than that heat. So I just use this wood cutting board and you could use anything similar to just set them up a little bit off the heat. Whatever touches the heat clo most closely might turn just a little bit cold, uh, oh, what do you call it? Clabbered or, or thick with just a little bit of chunks to it because it's been so high heat compared to the rest of it. So I like to have them uniform and always make sure they have enough uh, room for air to pass in between all of them. You don't want them to be sitting right up smack next to each other where air doesn't flow well between them. But there I've got them set. I've got the light turned on under the microwave and I'm just going to shut this door and make sure I don't turn the microwave on for about the next 10 to 12 hours. And in the morning, I'll have the most perfect yogurt just waiting for me with a little bit of, it makes my mouth water thinking about it, a little bit of raw honey poured over the top and some chia seeds to give it just a little bit of crunch. There will be nothing better. Okay, it's time for the unveiling. I can't wait for you to see this. This yogurt has waited all night. You see that it's had a little condensation on the top, but look at how thick that has become. Isn't that wonderful? Let me just cut into it so you can kind of see it a little bit. Nice thick yogurt. Isn't that wonderful? Now my favorite way to fix this is with a little bit of raw honey. So I just pour that right over the top. I want you to see the perfect way to fix it so you get it just right the first time. You won't want it with anything else after you taste the raw honey, but it would be great with jam or jelly or fresh berries on top. And then if you want to be extra nutritious, I've got some chia here. And chia is one of the most high protein, wonderful things that you can add to it. So I'm going to add about four little of these scoops to make about a tablespoon worth, I suppose. And throw that in there, stir it all together, and I will have the most delicious breakfast ever. All right, there's my chia and my raw honey, and I am ready for a delicious breakfast. And I wish you were here to join me because this is one of those most scrumptious treats that everyone should get to try at least once in life. I hope that you'll take a minute and share this video with someone you know who would need to know how to make some homemade yogurt. And also take a minute and subscribe to our channel and make a comment below so we know who you are and how we can be in touch with you or what you've tried that's worked. What's your favorite thing to add to your homemade yogurt? Until next time, I'm Krista Swartz and thanks so much for joining us. Hey there, before you go, I wanna share with you some encouragement from God's word. This is out of the very first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 and 26. It says this, Therefore I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or about your body and what you're going to put on it. Is not your life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet their heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not of more value than they? Now go spread the word.